and at six o'clock, we're going to open our special meeting of the City Council of Chavano Park. Uh, without objection, we'll dispense through it the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. There being no objections, we're to item number three. Item number three, citizens to be heard. Mike Jansen, Mike, would you give us your full name and where you live? Michael Jansen, 430 Bentley Manor. Uh, two quick things. I know you're aware of these two items, but I, I, I just thought I'd bring them up anyway. I know this time of year you get a lot of discussion concerning taxes, our tax rates, lowering our tax rate. And I think that's laudable, and I hope you do, but please don't ever let us get in the, in the same shape or situation as Castle Hills where, where we lower the tax rates and all of a sudden we can't afford to fix our roads and streets and utilities and, and whatever else. We never want to be in that position, and hopefully we're always looking at the long term, not the short term, to make sure we're, we're always beyond all that. The second is, I know that there's been discussion over the years uh, regarding paying off our bonds. I also think that's a great thing to do. Uh, I'm, I'm in favor of that. My only concern is, I'm, I'm not sure I know the projects that are coming up, the capital projects, roads and improvements, whatever that's coming up in the future. I really think our interest rates are headed up, uh, especially I think our tax exempt rates are headed up if Congress and, and uh, Trump can get together on it. On a, uh, on a bill to reduce tax rates. So just please remember or please consider when you're looking at paying off our bonds that if, if we need to borrow money, and I don't know if there is a need or not, but if we need to borrow money in the future, we, we could be paying off cheaper bonds now and having to replace them with more expensive bonds in the future. So that's all I had to say, and uh, thank you for your service. I know you have a tough job to do. And I'm glad it's you, not me. Thank you. Okay, are, are you speaking as a citizen or are you speaking as a governmental accountant? Because <laughs> there, there are two governmental accountants in the community, and one is your lovely bride, Barb, and I think she's better than the other one. But uh, I'm speaking as a retired, unemployed citizen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, without objection, we'll dispense with item four of the agenda. Comments from council, there being no objection, leads, leads us to item five, item 5.1, discussion, action, TML, IEP, IEBP, re-rate and establishing defined contribution. Bill? Okay. Um, we addressed this at the last meeting and, uh, and I've updated the, uh, and basically the council deferred this action and then scheduled a special meeting to be able to address this uh, with further consideration today. So. Um, in light of that, we basically have provided you the same staff summary sheet with highlights to that. And so those highlights include three um, comparison spreadsheets, which talk about a model of, of increasing the defined contribution level by $56, by $78, and by $91. And we provided some background information associated with that. Um, the the consensus of the council, but it wasn't official vote, was that there was support to, um, to provide at least a $56 increase in the defined contribution plan associated with the health cost, but that um, you wanted to consider other options. And guidance that I got was to take a look at, you know, average health cost as they've increased to the city and how that impacted. and. And frankly, that's hard to do um, in terms of getting very specific, but we, we did provide some information. There, there are estimates that we think the health care increased 5.7% in 2014. It didn't increase in 15, but you upped your defined contribution by 5%, so that effectively it, it was a 5%. And then 16, it was 2.5, and then this year we know it's 20%. And so um, we had a discussion last time about because most of the plans, the cost to the city is less than the actual defined contribution plan, the actual increase was somewhere around 12% um, for the health care um, for just the employees only. But the kind of part that was troublesome was that those employees that had family or dependent health care um, those costs went significantly up. And so that was part of the driver, and I'm just re reminding you as to why there would be consideration for looking at something higher than the 12% employee cost. Um, so we, we, uh, we, we did a model which is about 17%, and we did a model which is about 20%. Uh, 
Um, I don't know how you want us to do this if we want to go through each one of the attachments. Um, attachment three is actually the comparison that shows um, the $56 piece. Attachment four is a 78, and then the attachment five is, is the 91. Um, I don't know, and I'll just ask counsel if you want us to walk through that in specific terms, if you've looked at it, whether we want to go right to discussion or how that might, uh, how you want to proceed on that. You know, it's a lot of tedious numbers and spreadsheets. Laura did a great job of putting it out there so you can kind of compare. But we're, why don't we just open it up for discussion? We'll see if there's a motion and a second, and then Bob. I'd like to make a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, go ahead and uh, approve the increase for defined contribution by 17%. Okay, and we have a second. We're now open for discussion. Do we have any discussion on the 17%? Okay, Mike? Help, if, if I may, help me out again. Which one is the 17%, the $78 a month? Should be attachment. Uh, well, no, I'm looking at the summary sheet. Seventy-eight dollars a month. Seventy-eight. Yes. Okay. yes. And then, um, if I may ask the the chiefs if there's been any discussion amongst your folks and what your folks are are saying. If if you if there's been any. Marianne? I, I will just say, yeah, Alderman Bill. Simpson, just because you've, you, you've kind of keyed me in on that before, but when we addressed this with the directors, one of the things that came out was the employee assistant plan, which is the next agenda item, and that was feedback from the employees there. Okay. Okay, Marianne. Is there a recommendation from you as the city manager, um, from you, Ms. Fagan, about uh, financially what might be in the best interest of employees and the city? Do you have a recommendation? or some guidance that you might give us if we need to go to the 91 per month? Yeah, I, I think that um, at this time I would not, it's not my recommendation to go to the 91 because I just don't know what revenue numbers are and I'm, I'm taking a more, you know, a little bit more conservative approach to that. I mean, because we can incrementally change. I think this is a, the 17% is a good compromise to meeting the cost increase and then providing some relief to those folks that have um, family members and at the same time it provides some more relief to those that have the high deductible payoff plans, which most of them do. So, um, you know, in reality, the increase increases go to paying off their health sa savings accounts, which then just get to put every year right and it's, it's one of the most used uh, accounts so it's it's 17 percent is our uh, recommendation because it's not a great cost to go to, to the to the 20 percent but I think 17 is about right and it's, it's a middle ground and we can adjust from there okay Michelle one of the things I'd asked before is what are other cities doing because you know obviously one of our big issues is making sure that we're competitive with what the marketplace is doing so if you tell me that the marketplace is covering what we need to cover at 91 that's something to think about if it's not then you know your recommendation is fine but I thought we were gonna maybe get some information on that we, we did look at that um, and Laura are you prepared to give you a, a couple I didn't bring I, my notes are in there from when I heard them last time with the holiday and the few people we had I didn't was not time to call other cities and try to get additional so I have the five that we got from the study Yeah. I just want to make sure we stay competitive and this is one of the areas we need to be competitive in. And then there was a number of the cities that contributed to the family members and so you know that's really hard to compare because you don't know we've decided not to do that so we've decided each employee gets a defined amount and and then he can distribute it 
through his health savings account, his retirement account, or his family members if he wants. And, and a lot of our employees are taking that delta and they're just, they're not putting it in their savings account, they're paying their family plans. And okay. The only reason I, I asked for some guidance and recommendation is because the difference between the 17% uh, and the 20% is less than $10,000 to the city. No. It's, it's $7,644 cost is that it? difference. Uh -huh. 13. And so, um, it, you know, if we're talking about being competitive, if we're talking about doing the right yeah, thing for 8, employees 000. and for the city, um, you know, that dollar figure, it would be helpful to know why uh, and, and some good reasoning behind why we might not do that. Uh, if the cost is that, and I'm not saying it's not a great cost, I'm just saying it's, it's not as much as I would have expected it to be. Yeah, so in this, here's, here's kind of the, the bottom line. In this case, every employee, at least the employee defined piece, they're actually going to get more into their health savings account and their savings account, and, and every one of them will, at the 17%, have a better plan for that. Now, there are the, the ones that have the dependents that aren't going to reach all that, but still this goes a, a good way of doing that. And again, health care is cumulative, so if you, when you make it this time, you know, and then next time there's a pressure, and so I just think it's, uh, I just think it's adequate. Um, and it, and it, I think the employees will be very happy with it. I mean, okay. because we're going to tell them, hey, we're not only matching what, what the cost increase is, we're, we're, we're going over that a little bit. Okay. Do we have any other discussion? There's no further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries. We've approved an increase to $78, uh, which would be, or $78, which would be the 17%. Okay, item 5.2, discussion, action, approval, employee assistance program. Bill, do you want to tell us about employee assistance programs? Yeah, there's, uh, there's employee assistance programs uh, that provide in-person and telephonic and remote and other kinds of uh, services to employees, whether you know, a lot of times it's associated with mental health or um, counseling sessions associated with that, um, but they do do telephonic uh, legal support and um, financial support. Um, some d programs differ, but uh, in our city, there's been over the last three years, there's been a number of incidents where um, our employees haven't had this and would have, would have, it would have been great to have it in, in place. Um, the fire, which our firefighters were the amongst the first responders and then they were literally the ones evacuating um, casualties and deceased people out of that building, you know, that's an impact from policemen who, you know, have to deal with the infant in the pool that's, that's expired and the family uh, to our public works where a fellow uh, worker had suffered a heart attack and then later died on duty. Um, and there's a number of other things. So. Um, this has been from the employees for the last three years, and, and and really last year we didn't have our ducks in order to get it done in time, and and um, we did better this year. Mike Naughton did a, a, the first initial homework for us and gave us Plan A, and then um, we asked Joe Mendez, Munez to come in and give us a Plan B option of that. Plan B actually came in surprisingly at a very competitive low price. And so in our packet, we've provided to you um, a fact sheet, um, some of the different uh, pieces of this. The bottom line of this is that the cost is, if there's two, two we're, we're gonna recommend this Deer Oaks uh, Employee Assistance Program Services. There's a two models, there's a three visit model for 96 cents a month per employee. And then there's a six, visit model, which is $1.27 a month per employee. And so when you add all that up together, um, the, the three visit per employee per year is $587 for the whole city, includes all employees. And then if you bump that up to the 777, uh, the six visits at $777 total, we pay one time. 
and, and then we have that assistance program. And it works such that if you need further counselings or you need further legal help or whatever, you know, there's discounts that are provided, but the, the employee would pick up the rest of that. So uh, we're asking for council support in approving the Deer Oaks Employee Assistant Program and the one that would be the six visit program per year, total cost of under $800 per year for the city if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, do we have a, <clears throat> a motion to approve contracting with Deer Oaks EPA program for six vis visits for each employee per year, uh, per year plan and budget in the fiscal year 2017-2018 budget? So moved. We have second. a motion. We have a second. We're now open for discussion. I, I will say that we have brought in counselors in after the fact, and what tends to happen is it's group session, and then it's, there's there's some, not as much you know it's people are reluctant to do that, and we have to coordinate it, and it's not as timely as we have liked to have been. So, we have tried to deal with some of these situations with our employees, but having a program in place beforehand is. And, and these are without copays, correct? Pardon me. These are without copays. Correct. So we've actually experienced some of these expenses almost to the same level um, in the last couple of years because we've called in someone we've had to pay them but it, then it's 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 a little after the fact and it's it's harder to coordinate so okay Mike forgive me a couple of war stories when I was a lieutenant I lost an entire squad which at that time was known as LERP team to helicopter crash there was absolutely no support provided my platoon or my company when that happened. Later, and when I was a team leader, we lost a uh, radio operator to a splat on the drop zone when his chute failed to open. There was no support given to us. Um, when I was in Ar Iraq, we lost uh, several folks in the embassy to mortar and rocket fire. No support was given to us. When my son was in the Philippines, he lost his two best friends to an IED um, and they had, by that time, the first group had set up the, uh, the counseling service, and he has benefited greatly from it. Later, when my son was killed in Afghanistan, my wife, or correction, my uh, daughter-in-law, my daughter, and my son have all uh, benefited from this uh, type of program that the Army set up. So I think it is the right thing to do, and being grotesquely crass, it is the uh, efficient thing to do because if we provide our employees the counseling that they need, then they're going to be better employees and they're going to stay on the job rather than staying home saying, I'm sick, I just can't face the job today. So I, th I think we need to do this. Okay. Do we have any other comments, Bob? So I have maybe a couple questions, clarification. So what you're saying is it would be the, the cost of the city would be in total 777 or 587. This would be the sixth visit we've 777. That's for the entire city, for all employees. Yes, sir. We're in a, it's in a pool because it's in GML. Right, right. So we benefit from being in the, in the pool, pool for 10,000, 15,000 So that, either one of those options. Okay. It's, a, it's a really great benefit. So clarify, this is something that we've not council uh, been approached with in the last several years. So I know when we went with TML, in my experience in the corporate world, a lot of these services are provided, provided as part of the health plan and health benefits and use your FSA or HSA appropriately for that. Is that is that not an option when we went to TML? This service wasn't, was it available in our, in our prior plans? Was it something that we never pursued? It was cost. Before we went with TML, if there were separate plans, and they were several thousand dollars, again, they didn't put us in a pool. Then they had this one, and this actually, the cost has gone down since we joined TML. Because so prior to TML, or we, we had the option to go in it, but it was a significantly more expensive. More expensive yes, we looked. And it wasn't part of the plan that we were part, part of. It was a separate line item. Same as this, but this is a different pool. company. Okay. It was a different company as well, but yeah. Okay. We utilized some of the free stuff. And it was really wasn't much. There was one employee that she did try and it was like it really didn't give me any help because what they, later on then it was they wanted money to help you do sessions. So 
the free ones or not. Okay, Mike. Kind of going on that same vein, it, I mean, I agree that this is really something that we should probably do and look at, and it's got a lot of value. I'm just wondering, it's kind of a bargain basement price at roughly $800 for the entire city. Are we going to really get some quality service? I mean, have we? Had, has anybody checked other cities that are using the service with these people? to see what they're getting. Is it really worth it? I mean, it, it's not much money, but I mean, if you go there and you kind of get, well, you know. insurance policy, right? So if, you know, most of the people aren't gonna use it, and so they put it in that pool. And well, I understand that, I understand that. So I think that's why it's bombed. You know, yeah, a, a, lot of, a lot of people that you're finding in these programs are probably getting reimbursement at the rate of about $35 per person. So that, that provides for 20 sessions for Shavano Park. If, and then there's an administrative cost, and the administrative cost is going to take, is probably yeah, going to take well, that total cost up to about $50 a session. So on that basis, we're getting 16 sessions. In most of the years in Shavano Park, we're probably not using 16 sessions. Uh, the year that we had the fire in Castle Hills that we supported, we would have used 30 of those sessions. I, that's not what really I'm getting at. I'm just saying this particular facility. Have we looked into, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to correlate the cost and you know. and that that actually that's a market rate for the type of counselor that is going to be interacting with our people. So so I'm I'm saying this isn't just a low ball cost for the number of sessions that are being offered. It's not like these are fifteen dollar people that we're talking to. Thirty five dollars is is going to be about what these people are going to receive as reimbursement for participation in this program. But uh, Chief, do you have any idea of, of, of this particular group? Yes. Have you talked to any of the other cities about their participation with them? Are they using this particular facility, though, this program, this deer? They use a different one than this, but I went over and researched. And most of the doctors that's in their group are in this same group. Well, I understand they're a pool. I'm just saying, so we've looked at the Deer Oaks facility and their program specifically and, and their... I did personal research on okay. Then, yeah, I just, you know, it's. Okay, so we have we have firsthand knowledge then, and, and it's we're we're getting good good we're getting a good product from them so. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion? Marianne? The only question that I had is um, I'm assuming that there is a request from employees to have a service like this, that there is some want and desire for Absolutely. having it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there being no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Item 5.3, um, budget calendar. Bill? The budget calendar is a uh, iterative thing where we go through and we we work through dates. Oh, uh, the motion was for the eight hundred dollar plan. I mean, yeah, the, it was for the highest plan. Yes, no, I, we understood. Yeah. That. Uh, so at the June twenty sixth meeting, council confirmed uh, this July thirteenth workshop date. Uh, at the special meeting on August third. And then we had a tentatively scheduled a special meeting um, 
on August 10th, but they moved that to August 9th. And then in the discussion about the future budget workshops, council deferred that to this meeting so that we would have um, all the aldermen present and we could confirm schedules and make sure that we had everything tight. So um, again, just to review the bidding, on August 3rd, city manager proposed budget is presented to council. August 9th is um, the record uh, tax rate and further discussion on the budget. And then there's a, then from that, there's opportunities for um, other workshops and meetings that are required. So I think we passed out a handout of, of you've got a hard copy here as well as this on your, in, in your, uh, in your um, iPad. But the, uh, what, what I'm looking for is to confirm, because I believe that they'll at least need a uh, 16 August meeting to discuss various kinds of things. So we have tentatively a special council budget workshops scheduled on the 16th of August. Um, also, we have one scheduled prior to the 28 August city council meeting. We don't anticipate having tax hearings, but there's a possibility that we could have tax hearings. I don't, don't think that will happen, but we'll see. Um, and then, and then there's the, the real questions, which is really um, the, the 11 September, which is pretty much a hard date. It's a Monday to do the first reading of the budget. The real question is, are we going to call a special meeting on the 18th of September and then do the regularly scheduled meeting um, on the fourth Monday like, like we normally do? So you, you break out the, the budget part um, and, you, and the 18th is only the second reading of the budget and then you're done? Or do we want to move it, uh, move the special, you know, the regular scheduled meeting to the 18th so you only have one? So again, we've done that in the past and in the times we've, 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 we've done it. So there's a challenge both ways. One is you, you're creating three meetings in September and that's hard to coordinate. The second one is that you're jammed up if you move it to the 18th, now you're trying to pass the budget. You got a normal other activities going, but anyway, we can, can you know, staff can do it either way. So, I'm looking to confirm the plan workshop on the 16th of August, the 28th of August, and then to decide whether to move the 25th, the September 25th um, city council meeting to the 18th, or to retain the normal um, 25th meeting and then conduct a special meeting on the 18th. That's that's really the uh, the discussion items we have. And I will just kind of say that in the workshop after we do, uh, after we break from this meeting, we're going to be doing a number of things. We're going to be looking at, one of the things is we're going to be looking at capital replacement schedule. We're also going to drill down into the fire and into the police, which is something we haven't done in the past prior to actually the city manager's budget. We won't have had an opportunity to drill down into the public works. Um, meeting and we can do that after the budget's presented or if council wanted to and I'm not saying you need to do this but the 24 July meeting you have an opportunity to schedule a workshop there and then we could drill down into the public works if you wanted to prior to the city council meeting or to the city manager presenting his budget so maybe that's something that you don't have to decide, but I want you to consider it. At least consider the actions that we talked about, and then maybe at the end we can work through. The mayor could call a meeting if he wanted to. Are we doing public works and water together? We would do public works and water together, um, but we're not prepared to do that today. Okay. Brandon uh, is on leave today. Okay, do we have a motion to set the workshops for the 16th and 28th in August and to set a workshop or regular council meeting on the 18th of September. I move that we have the workshops on the 16th and the 28th and that we combine the regular meeting into a special meeting slash regular meeting on the 18th. I if, second that. Okay, we and have that, a second. And I think we would also ask for confirmation on the, on the 11th of September as a special meeting as well. Okay, would you change your... I'm confirming that on the 7th. And to set the September the 11th as a special meeting. And August 3rd is a hard date, is that correct? Yes. Yes, sir. I'm out of here. 
Okay. Um, does everybody check the calendars, please? I'm good for all of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there any discussion? If there, yes, Mike. Um, the, I would recommend that uh, we amend that uh, to make the Monday the 18th a, a regular council meeting, and the rationale for that is that it requires a quorum of three, whereas a special requires a quorum of four, and we're looking several months in, in the advance. I'm okay uh, with that. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, um, do we still have a second? We're, we're going to cancel the meeting on the 28th. We could always schedule a special meeting if we needed to of September. Of September. No, the 25th. I mean, the, 25th. the, the 25th. So the, the 18th is going to replace the 25th. Okay, the 18th will replace the 25th. Of August. Yes, of here. September. That one, that one, and that one. We're good. Okay, so, so we're meeting on the 16th of August, the 28th of August, the 11th of September, and we're having a regular city council meeting on the 18th of September. Is and, that clear to everybody? And just one other thing, the 16th of August is a travel day for me. I should be here, but um, we're at the wind, whims of the travel gods. Okay, are we gonna have four people here for the workshop? I'll be here. Okay, are, is everybody gonna be here for the 16th? Mike may not be here. I will not be here. You will not be here on the 16th. Okay, so Bill, let's find another day. That one's just a workshop, so. Yeah. Tuesday? How about Tuesday? The 15th? Or you'll be traveling? I won't be here the 15th. I won't be here the 15th. I won't be here the week. The whole week? No. Oh, well, then, and then you come back on. I hope to be here in time for that, but I can't guarantee it. Then we yeah. go to the 17th. Yeah, workshop. Are you, can you be here on the 17th? 17th. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, it's then August. August yes. the 17th. Any other meetings here? <laughs> that's the third Thursday. Yeah, that's that court night. That's court night, and I have I have I have a yeah. recurring okay. conflict. Um, but that's a workshop, so that's pretty flexible. So that's the okay. We're meeting on the. Third, the ninth, and then we're looking for another date. Um, and is the third a workshop or special meeting? Special, okay, because yeah. I'm I'm not here the third. It's just a, you just get the budget. Yeah. You know, we're going to present the budget. If you're not here, I can we'll sit down and present it to you uh, before. Uh, well, I don't you know. want you to have to go to extra work. I can pick it up and study. Okay. Thank you, though. It's okay. Okay. So we have to go the next week. So the 21st, 22nd, 23rd. 21st works for me. Okay. 21st. 21st, does that work for everybody? Bob, are you back? Okay. Or would the 22nd be better? Um, 22nd probably better for me. But if are you all fine with the 22nd? That's fine. Mike? Yes, sir. So we're getting rid of the 16th and changing it to the 22nd. 22nd. Okay, uh, Marianne, I'm going to ask you to withdraw your motion to make a, re a replacement motion. Bob, are you okay with her withdrawing her motion? Okay, Marianne, I'm going to entertain a motion from okay, you. Okay, so I move that we calendar a workshop for August 22nd, August 28th, have the meeting on September the 11th, and a regular meeting on September the 18th. Okay, do I have a second? second. Bob is second in the motion. Do we have any further discussion? There being no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries, brings us to item six, adjournment. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a motion to adjourn from Michelle. Do we have a second? second. Bob is second in the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries.